In this video tutorial, we'll be going over how to emit Niagara fluids from particles in Unreal 5.2 to create something similar to what is shown here. With the approach shown in this video, you will be able to create all kinds of real-time smoke and fire simulations very quickly and easily within Unreal. To begin, I'll start with a brand new scene in Unreal 5.2 and I'll make sure my Niagara Fluids plugin is loaded. So edit, preferences, and in here just search for Niagara Fluids and you should just confirm that you have the plugin loaded so we have access to certain nodes within our effects system. Once you've confirmed that, we're going to right click in our content browser, create a new Niagara system, create an empty system and call it FXS for effects system blast and it's going to be a blast or an explosion of kind of like a, a burst of ex an explosion that says shra shrapnel everywhere and then that shrapnel will kind of fall to the ground and, and tumble so we're going to open up this blast effect that we're going to create and now we see our niagara effect system and i'm going to right click or press e and add a emitter and we're going to choose the confetti burst emitter because that gives us some nice tumbling particulate and a bit of an explosion or blast. And we'll have to modify it a bit, but you could really use any particle system you want. I'm just gonna use this as an example. So I'll create that confetti burst. And the very first thing I'm gonna do, because I can't really see the motion of it that well, like I see there's some particles here, but they're quite small. So what I'm gonna do is just go in here and change the size of it under initialize particle. I'll change the size of those sprites or of those particles where the cards attached to them to 15. So I could see that blast a bit more clear and it looks pretty good, but it doesn't feel like it has enough energy. So we're going to add more energy to it. But one thing that we have to deal with first is giving it this tumbling effect is the uh, effect in here called aerodynamic drag. And if I were to disable that, you'll see what happens. It's just a big burst and they don't kind of tumble around much. So I'm going to turn on that aerodynamic drag. We want a bit of that, but we want it to happen more at the end, not the very beginning. So on the aerodynamic drag, I'm going to go in here and right now it's choosing a random range from this minimum a maximum value. I'm going to click on that down arrow and change it to a float from curve. And then I'll be able to have a curve that specifies how this uh, aerodynamic drag affects the particles over time or over its lifespan. So I'm going to Click on that float from curve. Now I have that curve there that I can see and I'm going to do a little bit of a modification to it. At the start point, it's going to be zero, so it's just blast. And then I'll right click and add a key. And for that second key, maybe what I'll do is around um, a quarter way through its lifespan. So at 0.25, it'll still be zero. And at the very end of its lifespan, it will go to a drag of one. And now if we look at this effect, I'm going to shorten my timeline here. So watch that a couple times. It blasts out and then the particles only at the end start to tumble and float around. So I think that's a little bit better, but you could adjust this to your liking. But for now, I'm going to stick with that. Now, the very next thing we have to do is the whole point of this is we're setting up particles that will emit fluids from them or emit the smoke and volumes from them. They'll emit the Niagara fluids from these particles. So to be able to do that, you have to have an attribute on the particles that emits that kind of gas source into the Niagara fluid system. So under particle update here on our particle system, I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to add a fluid gas source and here it is fluids gas source i'm going to add that make sure it's placed at the very end and now what it's going to do is these particles are going to emit some density within a certain radius and with a certain temperature now what we need next is a way of actually emitting our fluids a container or a bounds to perform that fluid simulation. So we're going to add another emitter. We can just right click or press E and add a emitter. And I'm going to go and turn off this library only, go to parent emitters, scroll all the way down 
until I see something called a grid 3D gas master emitter. And I'm going to create that. And it's pretty much a 3D gas solver um, that has the core functionality, as you can see here from this little tooltip that we get uh, as a pop-up. So I'm going to use that grid 3D gas master emitter, add it to my effect system. Now we have it added in here. And what we're going to do, it, at first you're just going to see it's already emitting some fluids from like a ball. I don't want that. I want to emit the fluids from our particles, not from this random sphere. So we're going to click on this down arrow and that's going to open it up and show us all the options, which it's a pretty big effects emitter. It has a lot of things in here by default. These are all collapsed and it's still gigantic. But we're going to go in here and we're going to go to sourcing. So I'm just going to look through here. Collapses to make it easier. Sourcing. And you can see in here, there's something that says we're looking for what we're emitting from. So when we kind of scroll down here, you're going to see a section that should be a sphere. So there it is, grid 3D gas sphere source. I don't want it emitting from a sphere, so I'm just going to disable that. You could even right click, delete that um, if it allows you to. But I'm just going to disable it for now. And now when I rewind or play my effects, okay, no more volumes emitted. We don't see anything weird going on now with that, that ball emitting fluids. So what we want to do now is emit from our particle system. So we need to connect this grid 3D gas master emitter to our particle system. So I'm just going to pause my timeline here for a second. And we're going to go to emitter summary and we're going to filter it out by source. And you can see here's an option called the read particle source. I'm going to turn that on. Then you have to add the emitter name in here. So my emitter name is confetti burst. I type it in. There it is. Confetti burst. I'll select it. Now I've connected this grid 3D gas master emitter to our confetti burst particles. Our confetti burst particles has a fluid gas source. So it'll emit density within a radius and a temperature. And now everything should work. If I rewind and play, now we get, look at that, some fluids emitted from our particles. But they don't look so good. They don't look like they're really simulating properly. So we have to make a few modifications here. And this is going to be important to get things to look correct. So what we're going to have to do under our fluid gas source on our confetti burst, Right now, the density is just a factor of one. Our radius is just a factor of one. It might be nice to have more stuff emitted at the beginning of the blast and then have it taper off. So what we're going to do for the radius, how far around the particle does it emit the volume? We're going to click down on the little arrow here for radius, and we're going to change it to a float from curve again so we can change how big or how large around that particle, how much of a radius around that particle, it will emit fluids and how it will taper off during its lifetime. So at the very beginning, it starts, you can see here at the curve, it starts at one and tapers to zero. And that's actually not that bad. I'm, I'm just going to stick with that. But what I'm going to do is change the scale curve here to 10. And what that will do is scale it up 10 times. So instead of having it start at one, it's going to act as if it starts at 10 and tapers off to zero. So it's really just like a multiplier of the curve. And if I rewind and play this now, hey, that starts to look a little bit more interesting. So now we have something that looks pretty good. But this box or the simulation container it's sitting in is kind of clipping a lot of our effects. So we need to make that simulation box bigger. And to do this, we're going to go back to our grid gas master emitter. We're going to go to emitter summary. We're going to go to simulation tab or simulation filter. And we're going to set the world size. Right now it's 400 by 400 by 800. I'm going to make that 800 by 800 by 800. Now that will reduce the quality because the box is getting bigger, but it will still have the same resolution uh, amount here on each axis. So it 
It'll reduce the quality if you make that box too big, and you might have to up the resolution here, but already these fluid simulations are pretty heavy, so I wouldn't want to put that up too, too high. But this is looking pretty good now, and it's at least bigger. Now we do notice a little bit of streaking artifacts, like we get these little steppy bits where the, the particles emit the fluid. We can kind of deal with that. There's a lot of other things you can do to make that more interesting and more broken up. But before even getting into that, we want fire. We're lacking fire right now. We don't have any fire emitted from this um, source. We just have smoke. So let's add or enable temperature. So on our grid 3D gas master emitter, again, we're going to go to emitter summary. We're going to filter it out by simulation. And you can see down here under attributes, we have density enabled, but we don't have temperature enabled. So I'm going to enable temperature, rewind, play this. Okay, now it's like nuclear. It's super bright and it kind of tapers off to this fire. I don't really like what that's doing. So let's make some modifications to our temperature. There's a couple ways you can do this, but I think the easiest way to do this is we're going to go to our fluids gas source on our confetti burst and where it says temperature, instead of having a fixed value of one, we're going to change that to a fixed value of 0 0.05. We could also do a curve that tapers it off, but let's see what 0 0.05 does. That works a little bit better. It's still bright and still a big blast at the start, but then it tapers off that heat pretty fast. Um, so that's pretty good. That's working pretty well. And again, we can go into more settings about this, but this is more about just getting over the basics of how to emit fluids or a volume from a particle source. So we've kind of already done that. The only thing I'm going to deal with now is this steppy look that we get uh, when emitting off some of these particles. So there's a couple ways you can deal with that, but a really easy way that can kind of help improve the look of your fluid is going here to your grid 3D gas master emitter going under emitter summary, filtering it out by source, and turning on this option called use streaking. Now you might want to up the values a bit, but what I have here is not bad by default. Maybe I'll make the samples a bit higher to 80, streak rate a bit higher to five, and rewind and play that. And that'll just kind of break things up a bit and makes it look a little bit more higher detailed as well. And sure, we still see some streaking, but it's not as bad. And when it starts to dissipate or have that smoke taper off, it looks like it has more detail now as well. So this is looking pretty cool. There's a bunch of other things you can do. Adjust the color, adjust uh, the look of the smoke and fire in many different ways. And that all can be found in our grid 3D gas master emitter. But one other thing that we might want to do now is even though we use that confetti burst to drive these fluids, I might not want those little papers or those confetti pieces visible now. So I can go to my confetti burst, turn the sprite renderer to off. Now those won't be visible, but they'll still be kind of emitted um, to drive our fluids. So now we kind of have our blast set up and created. If we want our blast to feel a bit more high energy, what we can also do is change the velocity of our confetti burst particles maybe make the velocity a random range of 300 to 1,000. And what that will do now is give us a bit more of a kind of higher energy, higher velocity on that initial blast. And that looks pretty cool. So we can save this already, pop it into our scene, start lighting it or putting it into our scenes. And we have a pretty cool looking burst or blast of smoke and fire and we did this all in a very short amount of time so now you're able to emit um whoops got a bit too close there now we're able to emit particles or volumes from our particles really easily and doing this you can create all sorts of effects and it can obviously get a lot more complex but this is a pretty good starting point for getting familiar with niagara fluids and particles in Unreal 5.2. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and if you're part of the Patreon, you will also get access to this PDF that goes over all these steps we covered, 
in PDF format, step by step. And it'll also cover a little bit more like additional tips as well. So if you're part of the Patreon or you want to check out the Patreon, check that out in the description below. Otherwise, give this a try. Join the Discord, share screenshots of what you were able to create, and let me know if there's any requests for the next video.